Hi, Curtis Satino here for Community Hotline, sitting in for Monica Weitzel. And my last guests, guests this evening are Tim Park and Daylene Young from the Sandy Actors Theater. Welcome, you guys. Thank you very much. And we're going to talk about theater. I hope so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to give us a little bit of a sort of a setup for about the theater, the 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 Sandy Actors oh, Theater? Sandy. I saw that it went through some different names in its history. So yes, it has. But uh, as far as an organization, it. We're one of the oldest community theaters in the state. We've been in operation since 1976, and we do a full season of full productions, uh, five plays, uh, usually very well-known plays. Uh, it's uh, uh, very well attended, good patronage, uh, hilarious shows. It always helps. And so, is Last Romance, your current production, hilarious? The, the next one we have, which is The Last Romance, I would say it's, it's a romantic comedy, and it is about an 80-year-old man meeting a 75-year-old woman in a dog park and what goes on as they try to communicate their differences. And because she's such a younger woman. Oh, yes. <laughs> They're from different cultures. Different cultures. And, Daylene, you are the director of this production? I am. How's that going? How is, this, how is it going? Yeah, how's it going? <laughs> well, we're, we're right going into tech week, so it's, you know, it's, it's good, but it's, it's, your, it's your high anxiety time. Tech week is? Tech weekend, yeah. What, tell them what tech week is. Um, up to now, the actors, it's been all about the actors. Don't tell them it's not ever anything well, but. <laughs> but now it's bringing in the lights and the sound and whatnot, and, and it's, it's frustrating time because now they're to the point where they're ready to really, you know, go a step further into their acting, mm -hmm. but now we're going to draw back and it's going to be stopping for a light and trying out a sound and then wondering, is, is there a better song for this moment, <laughs> you know? and asking them to do a portion of a scene again and trying a different song. So it's, it becomes a, the technical part. So a little more start, show. stop, and, and look, perhaps trying, if they've kind of got in their mind, it's set a certain way. Yeah, and, and, and it'll, things will shift, and, mm -hmm. the, and the lights come in. And it's funny to think of a light being, like, it can, it can throw you when you're on stage because all of a sudden it's a, it's a bright light, mm -hmm. you know, and, you, and you're used to just rehearsal lights or it's or it's going to be a a lower light and and it just everything everything throws you as an actor mm -hmm. everything is it throws you at, at a certain point and then you get used to it and then you love it and so yeah. it's the best way to prepare for the the opening oh you essentially. have to you have yeah. you have to do yeah. this yeah yeah, yeah. why don't you tell them a little bit about the story though i gave a well, very yeah. very <laughs> brief <laughs> It's, you know what? It's a perfect Valentine, you know, like a Valentine holiday piece, mm -hmm. um, because it is the last romance that these people will have, very likely in their lives, you know. And it, and it really is a romance, and it takes place um, just about a week in their lives together, and it goes through, I don't want to give the story away particularly, um, but there, there are four roles in, the, in this play, and three of them are um, older people, and then there's a, a, younger, a younger male role, and um, he's kind of a surprising role. I, and I, again, it's, it's, it, it's what, it's all your, it's things you left behind, you know, in your youth, is it? It's it's maybe a dream you once had, and someone starts to rekindle something in you. Um, it, it's really people who didn't know that they'd have certain feelings again, mm -hmm. and 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 I guess everybody still has a teenager in them. And, for, and the three bad. adults yeah. have moments in this show that, they're, that they behave like teenagers. They don't behave like your parents or grandparents <laughs> or how you think they should behave. And I think that's what's fun about the show, that if you want, you know, it's, it can be very mature and they can also turn around in a moment and be very immature. 
and uh, <laughs> and we have a dog in the show also yeah, and, and he's delightful and he's great he's yeah. he's a seasoned actor <laughs> <laughs> but no lines no lines but he's important he's very important <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, this is his second appearance at a, in a play at Sandy, yeah. too. So it seems like a real throw of the dice to include an animal in a theater production. I, I, I'd better chime in on this one. Last year we did, I, I directed a show, and we had five dogs in it now. And one thing I've said afterwards, never again. <laughs> With five, or just... <laughs> I'm not sure I want any dogs. <laughs> Um, it, it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. It really is. Just keeping the animals focused. Well, yes, and keeping the owners focused too. I, I shouldn't say that. Today. <laughs> <It's good laughs> on TV. Hey, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> if they weren't used to having their animals in the theater space, it might be a new experience that they didn't grow well, accustomed it, to in it time. It was a challenge just yeah. to include everybody in that whole process. Mm -hmm. um, we're not just dealing with the actors. We're dealing with uh, a lot of other variables, but right. it was great. The audience loved it. Oh, I bet. But then to keep it a little safer this year, we went to one dog. One dog, and, and, and he's a really good dog. <laughs> we had him in the show he last behaves. year, too. He really is a good dog. Do you think he's going to brag to the other four dogs that didn't make that it? I got the just, role. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my concern. <laughs> well, he did have a good tryout. So. Yeah. Well, I understand we have a few pictures from this. If we could pull those up, we could take a look and perhaps get some feedback. That's a picture of us. Yeah, that's not the show. No, although I would, I'm willing to be the dog. Okay, so who do we have here? Oh, that's Jim and Lexi. Those are our leads. And they look great. The leads in Last Romance. Uh huh. Yes, and so their characters are. Um, let's see. I can't remember. <laughs> well, Carol. Carol. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's their park bench. All right. There's the boy. That's the youngster. Ryan. Uh huh. Is he a hooligan or is he a good a good guy? He's quite surprising. He's a good guy. Good. Yeah. He, he he's actually the alter ego of yeah. Ralph. Oh, fine. Many years before. Yeah. And then this is our fourth actor. That's right. And she plays Rose. And what's her name? Rose. Oh, oh the actress. Um, Berta Limbaugh. Yeah. And she's on our board at Sandy, but she is the sister yes. in the play of Ralph. And you can see she day. really likes a lady. I yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Does that she look had, she had to practice? She has so, issues. Hmm? Did she have to practice the, the, the dour scowl? She did? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, good. she's not like that. She's really great. <laughs> but no pictures of the dog, but it's an adorable I dog. We did. He's great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to move on and talk a little bit about the, the Reader's Theater? Okay. Um, Reader's Theater is, has been going on for two and a half years now here in Gresham. It uh, started pretty much a number of years ago before that um, when Mount Hood Repertory was still um, in existence in um, Gresham, which was a great company that did summer shows um, directed or, and led by Tobias Anderson, who's a Gresham resident. But uh, because of various economic things, they did have to uh, discontinue for a while. They also did a Reader's Theater program during the year, though, um, during the regular, like, September through May time. And Reader's Theater is a unique experience if you've never seen it. It's the emphasis is on the text. There are no, no costumes usually or, or props or it's usually, you know, stools and music stands. But it's amazing how well this all re communicates to an audience. It's like listening to, you know, a, a radio program. We do full length plays. People are not just reading. Mm -hmm. They're truly acting. We do have mm -hmm rehearsal. Um, it's limited, but we usually have maybe three rehearsals, and I am quite impressed with what these actors can do. We do them once a month. It's on the third Monday of every month. We just had our first one of 2013 this past Monday, which was Neil Simon's Broadway Bound, 
Um, it takes place at the Gresham Chapel and Evening Event Center, which is on at 257 Southeast Roberts. Uh, we were very pleased and we had a completely full house nice. this past Monday. <clears throat> um, and we had some really, really good comments on Great. the show. Is there music in Foley as well or is it is just acting? No, it's, it's acting. Okay. Usually, additional... usually we're, we're not doing sound effects or anything. It's left very much into the imagination of the audience. Uh, occasionally there may be a little bit of music if it has to be. Mm -hmm. We will have the director usually will read some stage directions if they have to be. But it's surprising how little has to be said and how much can communi be communicated mm -hmm. and experienced um, in this medium. In some ways, it's, I wouldn't say it's better than an actual live performance, but it, it involves an audience in a very different way. We normally have had the pleasure of getting standing ovations afterwards. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Well, I would think that with the, uh, the extra imagination required to, to take it in, a person might feel more engaged at the end sometimes. Yes, I think that has something to do with it because again, like I said, the emphasis is just on listening to what the, the author wrote mm. and getting involved in that. So there's, you know, in a way, that's all you're experiencing, but it, it draws you in. Yeah. What's the next production you're Our next do? one is The Trip to Bountiful, mm. which is a pretty well-known play by Horton Foote, and we, that will be February 18th. Again, it's Monday night at 7 p.m. We're privileged to have one of Portland's best-known actors in taking the lead of that, and that's Jane Fellows. She has been in a number of shows in the Portland area, plus um, done some things with us at Gre uh, in Gresham Inn in Sandy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's that story about a little bit, if you want to give me an elevator? Okay. Uh, Without giving away anything that's going to ruin it. Uh, <laughs> Carrie is an older lady who lives with her son and daughter-in-law, and she wants to return to her hometown of Bountiful um, just one last time to understand sort of where she came from and um, what is going on, she feels like, you know, if she can just do that, things will make sense again. And it's just her efforts to get back to that place. It's very much a memory play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a well-received movie, made into a movie, and I believe it was in the 80s. With, uh, and Geraldine Page. Geraldine Page. I, got, I knew the Geraldine, <laughs> and I was trying to... Um, won a, the Academy Award for Best Actress for the role. Was it called at the same time? Uh, yeah, it's called okay. the, the Trip to Bountiful. And when you see Jane, you would think she deserves one too. Yeah. Is this some, a production that you'd been wanting to do for a while? Because you're the you're the producer of, of this series. Um, well, I've been one of the I wouldn't main persons that have instigated the you series. You were the, the only one. Yeah. You were the leader at first. At first. There's a number of people involved, and we always need more people. Okay. As with any volunteer organization, it exists because people are willing to give their time. And they're passionate about yes, it. Yes, and it, it yeah. takes a lot of people to do something like this. To, uh, from the very beginning of reading plays and determining a season, making a publicity, uh, just getting the word out, it, it's an awful lot involved besides just, you know, you know, dealing with getting directors, casts, and all of that. And every, every month we're doing a different show. So mm -hmm. it's a continual process. Um, Trip to Bountiful actually was done in Portland uh, two or three years ago, and Jane was the lead in it. I did see it and uh, was pleased and impressed. We chose as our theme this year for Reader's Theater, Memories and Dreams. So it fit very well. Oh, perfect. So every year has got sort of a, yes. an umbrella that you're working under uh, thematically. Mm -hmm. Well, great. So we've got the, the last performance directed by you coming up. And then we have the trip to last performance. What did I say? Performance. performance. It's not a performance yet, but <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, what you said, <laughs> the last <laughs> romance. Yeah. 
Uh, I want to thank you, Tim and Daylene, for coming in and sharing what you guys are up to. Really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for viewing and watching Community Hotline here for Metro East Cable Access. Cable Access? I can't even say.